This is a one tube radio circuit from an old book from say 1920 or 1930. I don't know that exactly. It's called The New Radio Book for Boys, written by Mr. Hendricks. It was bought in Amsterdam. Um, and it gives all kinds of old school radio circuits. And there's one radio circuit that is, in my opinion, interesting for beginners. Hear all kinds of coils from those days. And also how you had to connect DC, AC, etc, etc. Very interesting, this book. I love these old books. Um, there's one schematic that is quite interesting. And that is this radio. This radio. Um, one tube radio. One tube radio made in those days with a A415 that's a completely obsolete tube. It's a triode tube and the principle is very simple. This tube acts as amplifier but also as radio detector for AM signals. Here we have the tank circuit. Here we have the back coupling coil. The, these coils are connected in a certain way. The radio signal comes in on the uh, antenna. This is the antenna capacitor that decouples the tank circuit from the antenna to keep the tank circuit properly tuned to AM. Uh, and then the radio signal enters the triode and here the radio signal is amplified and detected. The detection has somewhat to do with the value from this resistor, so that's important. Uh, when you hear some distortion in real, you can go higher with this resistor. Now it's one mega ohm, but it can also be four mega ohms or two mega ohms, and in that case, a more uh, charge is stored on the grid. It doesn't flow off so quickly, and that has another effect on the AM detection. The telephone that was used in those days was a telephone from approximately 1500 DC ohms. Perhaps it's, it, is, it is not uh, easy to find such a, such a telephone. But you can for instance use here a resistor from approximately 2 kilo ohms and bridge that resistor with a crystal mic, crystal earphone, only a crystal earphone, not a low, uh, low uh, DC uh, ohms. Um, uh, telephone that will not work. Only a crystal earphone bridged with a resistor. This radio was made for batteries in those days, 1920, 1930. Many radios worked on batteries. That's also this design. An anode battery was necessary from approximately 90 volts and a battery to feed the filament, to make this filament glow. Uh, it looks very simple, this radio, but how does it look when we want to buy to uh, make it in real? I've made a sketch and I don't say that this will work. It's only a sketch, but I think the approach is good. It's a good approach and I have uh, built quite a few from these uh, one tube old school radios and for instance in my book Retro Radio Dutch text issued by Elector in the Netherlands. You find, for instance, uh, also a one tube a medium wave radio on page 47. And I used in that radio exactly the same tube as I have uh, drawn here. It's this tube. From Raytheon, Raytheon, it's the 
888. And this is not a triode, but it is um, another type of tube. I can't remember the word at this moment, perhaps I will tell it later. It's a shielded grid tube and it does not have uh, uh, three electrodes inside but four. But you can uh, change that shielded grid tube to a triode by connecting two, pin two to uh, pin one. And you can find surely find the connection from this tube on the internet and it's very very easy. Okay, um, this was my sketch to make such a radio when you want to do experiments with these kinds of radios and these simple one tube radios from the 20s. This is a good approach. Uh, a piece of uh, multiplex, approximately 1.5 centimeters. Glue a piece of tin plate at the underside. Punch in a few brass nails here. Make here a minus winding and solder that winding through the, the wood to the tin plate. So drill a hole and uh, solder uh, a massive wire here. Then we have here the tuning capacitor. The tuning capacitor is in the circuit, that's this capacitor, on one side connected to ground. So this is the tin plate. One side connected to ground, that is there is a reason for that. Um, and that is the so-called hand effect. When you touch with your hand to that uh, capacitor, um, your body forms a kind of capacitive ma mass and it can detune uh, the radio from the station. But when you connect the, um, the mass from this tuning capacitor to the template, to ground, that effect is gone. The back coupling capacitor C2 must be complied, completely isolated. And I've drawn it here. Uh, isolated, triplex, completely isolated. And also here comes a knob, and here also a knob. With this knob, with this cap, you tune into the radio stations, and with this knob, you set the, uh, the, the level of the back coupling from the output here to the input. And you must set that in a critical way that the radio it just not does not generate and then the uh, radio has its maximum uh, sensitivity to receive the AM radio stations. You can make a coil from a toilet roll, glue it first with PVC glue, um, then wind a massive wire on it, plastic isolated, 60 windings is a good choice. You can also go to 80 windings and that regards this coil, L1. This is this coil and this cap set the frequency band where the radio works. And that must be in this case this band. <coughs> um, and this is the back coupling coil. You can wind them together at the same time on the same coil, in the same direction, uh, but um, my advice, I think that will work better, to use not so many turns here for the back coupling coil. My advice is to use 40 turns. So slip the, the, the wire out of your hands when you have 40 here and wind on here with that 60 turns. As you can see, the um, the antenna coil is connected here to the trimmer. The trimmer uh, goes, uh, it's also a capacitor, goes to the antenna. It must be approximately 4 meters. I think that will work. This is the coupling capacitor to the grid C4, 220 picofarad. And I think that's all there is to tell about this circuit. The tube that you use 
must be a tube with not a too high amplification factor. So it must be quite a little bit a lazy triode tube. You can uh, search that for instance in a tube handbook. Many tubes here, uh, triode tubes, and I cannot say whether uh, whether this, these are good tubes, but uh, this tube, for instance, is not usable because it has it needs an anode voltage from 200 volts. Think a little bit too high for this application, but you have to search somewhat on the internet to find a tube suitable for battery. Uh, applications. You can however also use a tube not for a battery application and then we you can find for instance such a tube. This is a modern tube, the filaments and the cathode are separated. Uh, so that's a, diff a difference. You have to feed, supply the, um, the filament with a separate voltage. Often that is 6 volts for the European ECC tubes. You can use the whole circuit, it, it works the same, and um, but uh, my advice is to uh, slowly add a high voltage to the cathode. So when you use here a modern tube that has to operate on 150 volts or so, or 200 volts, don't um, uh, connect that 200 volts suddenly to the tube. Slowly uh, raise the voltage, uh, for instance, with a resistor in series um, as a kind of procure. And uh, in that case, you can also use here a resistor instead of a, a choke coil. The choke coil, by the way, you can make such a choke coil yourself approximately 600 windings or 1000 windings, a pair isolated on a plastic core from approximately 8 millimeters. And as I've told earlier, this whole radio was made for battery. So I think this tube worked in those days on 19 volts, 90 volts for instance, and the filament on 4.5 volts. But when you use this tube, 68.8. You only need 1.2 volts for the filament and this tube works already on 30 volts. Of course no powerful radio reception but it is a reception by a tube and that has in my opinion a, a, a quite a somewhat other sound compared to reception by a transistor or the field effect transistor. Uh, the values are given here in centimeters, that's very old. It's approximately picofarad. It is 0 0.8 times uh, centimeter is the value in picofarad. So I think that was all there was to tell. I wish you success. Here are the tube connections again from the uh, 688. Um, the filament has uh, indication where the positive and the negative must be connected and you have to take that in account. 2 goes to the uh, anode. This is the way that we count the pin connection from the tube and perhaps you will be lucky and get the whole thing into operation. I wish you luck.